Hey everybody, welcome to Ultimate Survival Tips. I'm David. Today I'm going to take you behind the scenes into a series that I've been shooting for over a year and a half on how to become a beekeeper. I've been keeping bees for over 20 years now. So today what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to talk you through some methods and practices and take a look inside these hives and start to prepare them for the winter. Start to prepare any that have extra honey for us to be able to extract that sometime in the next month. I think it's gonna be interesting and probably enlightening and my hope is that you too will want to become a beekeeper. We need more beekeepers. It's good for our environment, it's good for our crops, and it's actually a really sustainable way to get something better than processed sugar into your diet. All right, so let's go get our equipment ready, and then we'll dig in and see what's going on inside of these hives. Let's get started. Okay, this first hive is a hive that we recovered this summer. Again, that'll be in our video series. But this was a swarm hive that we found in a tree close by. And what we do is we first smoke the hive here. And what that does is it, it's instinctive. The bees think that there's a forest fire. So what they do, is they go and they gorge out on honey and this makes them a bit docile. Just imagine like eating a really big dinner late at night and you just want to go to sleep. So it calms the bees down plus it's a very very nice bee day. So this is a hive that we built from a kit. First thing I'm going to do is just check this and see how much work we've got done in here. See how much honey they're putting on. This first super is a smaller super. Some people call them a short super. So you can see here, they're filling up about half of these small super frames out on the end. Again, they're favoring that front side of those combs. Always get a little bit more as we get to the center. It's a brand new hive. They had to build this comb and then they fill it with honey. And you can see here when it's all done at the right level of moisture, they go ahead and they seal it off. This super is not quite full. 
And I think what I'm gonna do, since they're favoring the front of these frames, is I'm just gonna simply turn all these frames around. Maybe it's because it's warmer on that side, I don't know. But it's gonna encourage them over the next week or two that they have with the goldenrod to go ahead and fill this up. They look healthy. They've got room to pack in any other honey that they take off for this year. We've got two large supers here. All right, regardless of anything, I'm going to leave at least these two on and that should be sufficient for this hive to make it through the winter time. Because for bees, it's all about instinctively knowing that they need to put on a lot of honey to make it through winters. This plastic piece with these flats in it. This is called a queen excluder. What we don't want is we don't want the queen going up into the comb that we're going to take off and extract the honey from. We don't want her to go up there and lay eggs. So since she is a lot bigger creation, we put these queen excluders between our what we call brood supers, the lower ones, where we're okay if she lays eggs and we want to her to lay eggs because the more eggs she lays, the more bees we get and the more honey we make. But this prevents her from getting into the supers we don't want her to get up into it because the worker bees are thin enough to fit through these slats. She's a lot bigger. I'm not sure if we'll see her, but if we do, I'll point her out. She is too big to get through these slats. I want to be really careful when we're in these brood supers for many different reasons. One, we don't just don't want to kill bees, although that's almost impossible. The bees make a substance called propolis. You may have heard of it. Some people use it for health medicinal reasons, as do they royal honey, as do they pollen. So many good things come from bees. It's a sticky substance and they stick the whole hive together. So that's why it's a little bit difficult to get these out. Now you can see here, this is a beautiful full frame. That's a really good sign because as I mentioned, this was a swarmed hive. They started essentially with no honey, no comb. So they had to build comb from scratch starting about a month and a half ago, six weeks ago. Filled up with honey so they can make it through the winter. And you can just see this thing is just filled up with honey. This is a really, really good sign. What we do want them to do now is get up into the top section and get that filled up. This hive is doing really good for a swarm. As I'm looking through here, here's what I'm looking for. There's evidence of a queen. With so many bees in here, it's hard to find a queen. So bees always work in like a semicircular pattern. That's just the natural way that they build their hives. We can see right here, this is older brood. That queen is still laying eggs possible the queen's right up in here so that's all a good sign what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at honey I'm looking at a lot of bees I'm looking at brood those are all really good signs this hive's gonna have a really good chance of making it through the winter we have a pretty good indication that we've got a good healthy queen in here if they filled this up in the next week or two, I would take this off. And I would that would be some of the honey that we would keep for this year and extract it. That's really all I need to see. I just need to see. I don't want to disturb hives any more than we need to. I know we have a queen. We've got honey. We've got a lot of honey down here. I'm expecting that down in this brood super, there's a lot of honey and a lot of bees. The sound of these bees, when you've worked bees as long as I have, it's a pretty happy sound of bees. So the bonus is we don't really want our hives to swarm. They just do for various different reasons that I'll cover in another video. The good thing was that this hive swarmed early enough that they were able to recover, fill a hive so that it looks like they're gonna make it through the summer and next year we'll probably get, we might get 100 pounds of honey off of this hive. Okay, let's move on to the next one.
Okay, now we're onto the second hive here. This is a brand new hive from this year. You can buy bees. The way beekeepers get started is they build their equipment or buy it. I prefer building new equipment. It's kind of fun and it ensures you don't have any diseases in your boxes from days gone by. So what you do is you buy bees. You buy a package of bees. You get a package of two or three pounds of bees with a queen in there. So this is a brand new hive. Brand new boxes that we built. This came from a package that I got from Draper's Bees in Millerton, Pennsylvania. If you know them, if you don't, you should. They do mail order. You can get all your bee supplies from them. The Drapers have been friends of mine and helped me through my 20 year journey with beekeeping. They have observation hives in Millerton. They'll do field trips, all that sort of stuff. So go check them out. If you go there, tell them David sent you. It's a family run business for fantastic people. This is the hive that appears to have the most full of bees at night, especially nights where it's warm. The bees will come out and vent the hive. And so what you'll do on this porch down here, you'll see a lot of bees out there just like venting the hive. They like, they act like a fan and they circulate out so they don't get too hot and they try to move the air through the hive. When you're starting a new hive, you've basically got frame in foundation, which is wax, but there's no comb on it. So you put your queen in your hive and she's got nowhere to lay eggs and you need her to be laying eggs as soon as possible. This is beautiful. This is all fresh, drawn out comb from this year, almost filled with honey. And you can see right now how quiet and docile the bees are. And they're just, they're drinking honey because I smoked this hive and they're gorging out on honey. And what that does is it really doesn't deplete your honey supply at all, but it makes them uh, very quiet for a while. You can see we've got comb, comb drawn out and they're capping it. That's a good sign. Now remember, they, they work from the center out generally. So as we get to the center frames, what we should see is we should see more and more honey capped off. Again, we've got, pro this is not honey sticking all this together, it's propolis. It's a substance that the bees make, mostly from uh, evergreens with sap, like pine. Around here they would be using pine. So you can see this is almost totally capped off, a little bit less capped off, but these are full of honey. Okay, that's a short super. The reason we use deep supers and short supers, one, the bigger ones are, bees can put a lot more honey in them. Two, you want to give the queen as much space as possible. So you want to use the big supers for brood supers. Good reasons to use those. These shorter supers are often used by older people like me for honey supers because in a good bee year with hives that are well established, you stack these big supers full of 50, 55 pounds of honey up, and you're on a ladder six supers high. Needless to say, it's dangerous. Very, very heavy. All right, so what I'll probably do here is I'm gonna swap, put that big super here put the little super on top and we'll take the honey off of this little super. We'll leave this big super for them to make it through the winter on. I think that's a good plan. Our queen excluder is down here. Just one super underneath it. A couple of things we see right here is basically we've got workers and drones. Workers are female bees, drones are male bees. The male bees don't really serve you any purpose. They're just eaters. So, high probability, we've got a queen down here. Here's what I'm looking for, guys. See if you can guess. Biggest thing is, I'm looking for either the queen or I'm looking for evidence of the queen. Evidence I'm looking for is brood or eggs and larvae. I do believe this is a marked queen. So, cost you a little bit extra, but what they'll do is they'll put a painted stripe on the queen's back. It never comes off. 
and that way she stands out in the crowd and you can find her easier but there's little tiny eggs in there that's good evidence that we have a healthy queen who's laying right here we've got some capped off brood uh, by the looks of it those will be emerging it's approximately a 21 day cycle for bees from the time the queen lays an egg till the time that the brood hatches and the bee the worker bee comes out man if i had to guess i would guess you would have a queen ring in here somewhere basically for any particular reason if a hive the workers feel like the queen's not doing a good job make a couple of queens and the way they do that is they'll select some worker bees and they'll feed them the royal jelly again a special substance only the queen gets we got some concerning stuff going on down here which is exactly exactly why i wanted to check this hive again if we had a swarm happen at this point in the season the hive may not survive mm -hmm. at least the swarm portion. could be a good thing less less bees eating all your honey but the bee population will go down significantly we'll go from 50,000 bees down to maybe 5, 10, 15, 20,000, maybe lower. A lot of attrition happens in the winter time, which is all natural. Okay, so confident we have a queen here. They have almost no honey down in this bottom super. What they've done is they've done the smart thing. They've reserved it for the queen to lay eggs done a good job I may not take any honey off of this hive this year before we put the queen excluder back on brushing some bees off here so we don't kill too many right now I'm gonna let the queen function within the bottom two supers here hopefully they'll start putting more honey in that bottom super I want to take this honey off now I don't have to worry about a queen up here on yeah that should work fine okay this is our new hive for this year starting from scratch with some help from my friend bill draper at draper b thanks bill for all your help advice and for a couple of frames that had comb on them already Okay, we're now on hive number three. We've got one, two, three large supers on this one, plus a small super on top. This is the one that we started at the beginning of this series a year and a half ago. Some of this equipment was older that I had left over and I re-upcycled it, reconditioned it. The interesting story with this hive is the fact that this is the hive that swarmed harder for bees to make it in the wild now because there's a lot of diseases mm -hmm. and things like varroa mites that affect bees. This top super is a brand new super from this year and you can see they're doing a nice job with some honey on this. Good. These are the outside frames too so that one's they got to build that out a little bit more cap those off. I'll take anything that they cap off. Fully. I'd rather see full frames capped off just because once this honey will preserve for years and years and years in capped off frames because bees do everything for long-term storage that we ought to do. Mm -hmm. They get the moisture content right, they lock out the air, they lock out the sun, they regulate the heat in the hive. It's brilliant. So this is looking pretty good. This is almost full. Oh, man, I'd love to take this super off for our own honey. We probably would have one or two more supers on this hive had they not swarmed. So the advantage of the swarm is that we got another hive sort of kind of for free. Mm -hmm. Disadvantage is it took away from this hive that could have produced a lot more honey from, for us. Instead, the bees from this hive went, started a new hive, created two or three supers full of honey. 
for that hive, and that would have been honey we could have taken off in here for this year. I've got 10 frames in my hive. When you're really uh, looking to make it easier to extract your honey, a lot of guys will go with nine frames. That makes the bees, forces them to build out the comb a little bit further, and then you can use a special decapping knife right along the edge of the frame to uh, cut the caps off and extract the honey easier. This year we'll just scratch off the caps and I've got a friend who has a really good extractor, so it's not an issue either way for us. It's all pretty full, look at that, that's beautiful. That's all, that's stuff we can take off. Beautifully capped, There's a lot of honey in here. I'm expecting this is gonna be pretty heavy. Not a whole lot of action on this frame, that's fine. These outer frames, we'll just leave. We don't need to mess with them, but if they give me seven or eight, Fully capped off, beautiful frames of honey. That's not bad. In your smoker, if you don't want clear smoke because it's too hot, you want nice, see that? Just nice white smoke like that. That's what we want. Otherwise, you can just burn your bees. All right, as you can see in this one, we're giving the queen a two bottom supers here. So this is a metal queen excluder. I don't know. I like old school things. I prefer these, but they're a little bit harder to come by. And when I got my new hive kit builds, basically they come in parts and boxes and you put it all together, paint them. They all come with the plastic excluders now. That's why I have so many of them. Interesting bee fact, bees will travel two, three, four miles to find the flowers, find the nectar to make honey. Quite fascinating. Some of you may be thinking they have three hives close together, they're all white. How do the bees know where to go? Well, easiest way to put it is God. These have a very complex language and they have a GPS system in them that is second to none, all built by the creator. So they can find their way back to the hive even from miles away, and they hone in and know exactly what hive to go into. And it's not just GPS either. Every queen has a different scent, smell. They, they have pheromones, so they know their queen. I'm just ripping comb off of there. There you go, right there. That's some honey, baby. Wow. All right, I'm not fussing with this one anymore. Looks like we got a full super right here. Honey. Okay, other cool bee facts. Never swat at bees, hornets, or wasps. They have a natural attack instinct that if you swat at them or you move fast, like running away. Now, if you're like really attacked, you need to get out of there quick. But if there's just a couple or one that's bothering you, back away slowly. Don't swing at the bees. Hornets are just nasty. Another bee fact. <laughs> You will get stung if you become a beekeeper. Downside is, being stung. It's a word. Yep, it sounds like it feels. Upside is, actually folk medicine, and there's actually a lot of good. These stings can help with arthritis, folk medicine. But if you think bees are fascinating, you got somebody who's willing to teach you. I would start with your county extension agent. But you are going to get stung now and again. Especially if you work your hives for like an hour. And you get into like really big hives and you make everybody mad when they're having a good day. So hive number three is done. My analysis is, remember this is the one that swarmed, which is concerning because I think most of the bees like probably two thirds of the bees went with the new queen. Probably a third stayed with the old queen, but this hive has recovered well. We're probably gonna take off 50 pounds of honey off of this hive, even though it was a swarmed hive. So we're done with all three. I hope you enjoyed this video. All right, everybody, I guess we're done. The hives are finished for the next week or so. If you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Let me know in the comments and smash that like button. I hope to see you on the other side. And remember, be prepared because you never know.